good afternoon all in this session i am going to discuss about one of the very very basic sorting algorithm that is the bubble sort algorithm so in this session we will see what is this bubble sort algorithm what is the basic idea behind the bubble sort algorithm and why it is called as the bubble sort algorithm similarly we will explain this bubble sort algorithm with an example or we will illustrate the bubble sort algorithm with an example so that you will be very clear about how the bubble sort algorithm works so let us start our discussion with the idea behind this bubble sort the bubble sort algorithm any sorting algorithm you take the idea behind that sorting algorithm is very important you should understand and grab that point so you should be very careful to understand that particular point the basic idea behind any sorting algorithm so whenever we discuss about the sorting algorithms we will be discussing about the basic idea behind the uh, that particular sorting algorithm so be attend to and you please keep it in mind that so the basic idea behind the bubble sort algorithm is simple thing this is not the idea this tells why it is called as bubble sort the basic idea behind the bubble sort is compare adjacent elements and swap if they are out of order very simple idea that means you have to compare the adjacent elements and then if they are in the same order that means if it if you are going for an ascending order if the elements are in the ascending order if the adjacent elements are in the ascending order you just leave it like that but if the adjacent elements are not in the sorted order then you swap those two elements this is the basic idea behind the bubble sort and now we'll tell why it is named as bubble sort the reason is this particular bubble sort algorithm it mimics how the water bubble will come from bottom of the glass to the brim of the glass so you have a glass of water and assume that there is a bubble here water bubble so when you just shake this glass what happens is this bubble will come to the brim of the glass like this at top of the glass from bottom to top the same scenario happens here also in the bubble sort at each and every iteration the bubble or the element the largest element or the smallest element whatever it may be it depends on your logic whether you are implementing it in the ascending order or in the descending order so the largest element i am con considering in case of ascending right the largest element will move to the end of the list will move to one end of the list so for this reason this particular movement of the largest element going to the end of the list it appears as if the bubble is moving in the upward upward direction or it is moving from one downward to upward direction so that's the reason why they have named it as bubble sort now let us discuss the bubble sort with an example the idea is very important again i am just revising it uh, the basic idea behind this bubble sort the basic idea behind this bubble sort is compare adjacent elements and swap if necessary if necessary in the sense the elements are out of order you just swap them that's it let us take a list of elements in the array these are the list of elements 9 6 2 12 11 9 3 and 7 so when you arrange these elements in the array 
the first element will be having the zeroth index this is first index let me write here this is zeroth index this is the array right so the question how they will ask here is they will be giving you a list of elements and you will be asked to implement the bubble sort on those list of elements and sort the list so if first of all what you have to do is you have to store the given list of elements in the array so when you store the given list of elements in the array the first element will be having a zero index 1 2 Three, four, five, six, and seven. So here, total elements we have is eight. So remember, always remember while implementing the bubble sort, always uh, remind uh, remember that you have to go for the basic idea behind this bubble sort. So the basic idea behind this bubble sort is swap the elements which are out of order. after comparing the adjacent elements so adjacent elements are compared so here zero and one are adjacent elements you compare the zeroth element with first element that means you compare the nine with six let us always assume that in this examples we are going to consider the ascending order only descending order is also possible but you just have to change the logic that's it but whatever example i take in explanation of these particular sorting algorithms i'll be considering only the ascending order so compare this 9 with 6 since you are taking the ascending order those elements are out of order in the ascending order we know that the lowest element should be in the left hand side and the highest element should be in the right hand side so this lowest element should be in the left hand side and 9 should be in the right hand side so at this position these two elements are out of order they are violating the ascending order meaning so you just have to swap these two elements like this so after swapping these two elements now again apply the basic idea behind the bubble sort now you have to compare these two adjacent elements 1 and 2 so in the first index i have 9 and in the second index i have 2 so 2 and 9 is compared you can see that they are out of order so you swap them so 9 and 2 are swapped like this now you have to go for the next two elements so compare this second element with the third element that is 9 and 12 are compared but here you can observe that 9 and 12 the adjacent elements are in the same order they are in the ascending order only so you should not disturb that order you just leave it like that whenever they are out of order then only you have to swap them now the new list of elements will be like this now you have to compare 10 12 and 11 that means the element present at the third index and fourth index here the elements are out of order so swap them after swapping i will get the list like this now you have to compare the next two adjacent elements that is 12 and 9 that is the element present at fourth index and fifth index this one this two and when you compare these two elements they are out of order therefore when they are out of order the thing you have to do is just swap them after swapping i will get the list like this again compare the adjacent elements 12 and 3 has to be compared they are out of order swap now the last comparison 12 and 7 has to be compared they are out of order swap this is the completion of first iteration so after completion of first iteration you can observe here that 12 this is the largest element right this one the 12 is being moved to the end of the list so here it is moving and then here also it is moving 
here it is moving here it is moving and finally it has reached there so so after first iteration the largest element has been moved to the right end of the array this is the right end so it appears as if it is moving step by step as if it is as if the bubble is moving from down from bottom to brim so after this first iteration you can observe that the largest element in the list the largest element is 12 the largest element in the list is being brought to the right end of the array here and you go to the second iteration this is the complete first iteration so after completion of first iteration the right the rightmost element will be the largest element so for the second iteration onwards there is no need to consider this 12 there is no need to consider this 12 and you will be applying the bubble sort algorithm from the for the remaining elements that is for this list 6 2 9 11 9 3 and 7 so while going for the next iteration you should not consider the initial array you have to continue on this array only okay. so let us take this so after first pass i got first pass means first iteration i got the elements like this the last element is present that is present is the largest element now in the second pass the same idea has to be implemented compare adjacent elements so again start this one here i have 0 1 2 these are the indices i am writing here now don't consider this last element why because it is already sorted this entire list from 6 to 7 is unsorted the 12 is sorted right so in the second pass apply the basic idea compare 6 and 2 they are out of order swap and again compare the adjacent elements 6 and 9 they are in the same order leave it like that now compare 9 and 11 they are in the same order leave it like that compare 9 and 11 they are out of order swap them and compare 11 and 3 they are out of order again swap them 11 and 7 compare since they are out of order swap so by the end of the second iteration you can observe that the second largest element is placed as the second element from the right end so you can skip these two elements for the next iterations that means this is sorted array and for the next iteration i have the unsorted array as from 269937 so you apply the bubble sort on this unsorted array only though you apply the bubble sort on this uh, sorted array nothing useful operation will be done you are just wasting your time that's it so here i will apply the thing in the third pass compare the adjacent elements starting from 0 and 1 they are in the same order leave it like that 6 and 9 they are in the same order leave it 9 and 9 they are in the same order leave it 9 and 3 out of order swap 9 and 7 out of order swap so by the third iteration by the end of third iteration the third largest element is placed at the end third element from the right hand side so this is the sorted array after third iteration and this is the unsorted array for the third iteration now for the fourth pass or the fourth iteration compare the first two elements 0 and 1 element 2 and 6 they are in the same order leave it 6 and 9 same order leave it 3 and 9 out of order swap 9 and 7 out of order swap by the end of fourth iteration the fourth largest element is placed as the fourth element from the right hand side so this is the sorted array and this is the unsorted error now coming to the fifth iteration compare the first two elements 2 and 6 same order leave it 3 and 6 
that in the same out of order swap 6 and 7 same leave it so by the end of fifth iteration the fifth element fifth largest element is placed as the fifth position from the right hand side so this entire thing is the sorted array and these three elements are unsorted array and finally we are going for the sixth iteration so in the sixth iteration compared 2 and 3 there are no swaps compared 3 and 6 they are in the same order leave it like that so at this point you don't have any iterations so in the sixth pass th there are no uh, swappings that have been performed the meaning of the swappings not have been performed means the elements are already in the sorted order so you will stop the bubble sort program whenever you find an iteration where swapping is not done you can also go for the second one also after sixth pass you can observe here that the sixth largest element is placed in the sixth position from the right hand side and this entire thing is sorted and this is unsorted so you can go for the seventh pass also nothing wrong in it but if you go for the seventh pass this 2 and 3 are all compared and they are in the same order therefore you leave like that but there is no need to go for the seventh pass or seventh iteration the reason is in the sixth iteration you did not find any swap operations if you don't find any swap operations in the bubble sort you can identify that they are already in the sorted order so from the sixth pass where you didn't find any swapping operations you just terminate the program and you come out of the program that is to just to increase the efficiency of the bubble sort algorithm right so that is all about the illustration of the bubble sort algorithm with a good example and coming to the running time the complexities of the bubble sort analysis algorithm is the worst case time complexity of the bubble sort is big o of n square where n stands for the number of elements uh, whereas the best case analysis is big o of n here also n stands for number of elements we have some different variants of this bubble sort which we are not going to bother about this how it is going to implement one of the variant that means this is just to give the idea that bubble sort is not only implemented to uh, not only used to implement the sorting on a given list of elements to sort them in the ascending order or in the descending order right so till now we have seen only one direction bubble sort but there is a variant called bidirectional bubble sort where you are going to work back and forth right here you can see that you are going to work in only one direction like this but in bidirectional bubble sort you will be working in this direction as well as this direction in order to increase the efficiency but remember that implementing such type of bidirectional bubble sort may increase the efficiency but it will definitely increase the coding complexity so if you are very familiar with the coding part you can simply uh, implement that uh, bidirectional bubble sort also but the basic idea behind this bubble sort is this one so that completes the discussion on the bubble sort so in today's session let us have a recap of what we have discussed in today's session we have seen the bubble sort we have started our discussion with the basic idea behind the bubble sort the basic idea behind the bubble sort is compare adjacent elements and swap if they are out of order why it is called as bubble sort that also we have seen so for each and every iteration the largest element will be moving to one part of the array it appears as if the bubble is moving from the bottom to top that is the reason why they named it as the bubble sort and we have illustrated the bubble sort with a an array consisting of eight elements for each and every iteration you can observe that the largest element will be placed as the last of the last element in the sorted array and you can iterate or you can go for any number of iterations but 
to increase the efficiency you can stop the iterations when you find a previous iteration does not have any swappings so if an iteration does not have swappings means all the elements are sorted so there is no need or there is no meaning in implementing the other iteration so whenever you find an iteration which does not have any swaps you just come out of the program and you give the output which is nothing but a list of sorted elements see here the last pass 2 3 6 7 9 9 11 and 12 it is in the sorted order ascending order and finally we have ended up our discussion with discussion on the running time complex the worst case and the best case complex is the sal for today's session thank you one and all for joining the session in the next coming session we'll be discussing about another sorting algorithm like the selection sort or insertion sort